Chris Hayes from All In with Chris Hayes. Okay, uh, okay, let's get back get back to the hearings. The committee focused today on the 187 minutes uh, of the of the former president's inaction. Now that we have a, a fuller picture of what he was or was not doing that day, how does that change the story? Well, I think, I mean, in some ways, I think saying he didn't act undersells a little bit because there is one extremely crucial action in that period, which is that he sends out a tweet sicking the crowd on Mike Pence, who is in the building that they are overrunning. Mm -hmm. And I think that both what we saw today and what we learned today and what we learned from all of the, the testimony and evidence they've introduced is that that tweet looks worse and worse and worse and worse with every new fact we learn. It, look, it is harder and harder not to think that the president, in a fit of rage, was attempting to have the mob remove Mike Pence from his ability to do his constitutional duty. Because mm -hmm. every other gambit had failed. Yes. And after that, all you can do is, uh, in this case, quite literally burn it down. And, and that combined with the fact that we know he was calling U.S. senators. So he's in the room. But we don't know who yet. We don't know who. I hope we find out who. Other than Tommy Tuberville, yeah. Tommy Tuberville, who's who's on the phone with the president, being like, "Yeah, we gotta, okay, we gotta get out of here." They're, I think they're evacuating us, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we can talk about this later, right? Mm -hmm. So he's in there. He's he still wants he still wants his coup to happen. Mm -hmm. We know also a new fact we learned tonight that I thought was incredibly incriminating was that the White House photographer who takes pictures of everything all the time mm -hmm. wants to go into the room because she understands that this is a historic moment. Yes. And she is shoot out. Yeah. So there's no documentation. The call logs are shut down. He's not going through the White House switchboard. He's there with his cell phone. He is calling US senators. And at that point, I think you have to conclude, and I said this before, it's he is A, watching the coverage the way that the owner of a basketball team in the front row mm -hmm. roots on their team. Mm -hmm. He yeah. is, he is, he's sitting there like. He's a spectator. Well, let's talk about one of his top draft picks, uh, Josh, <laughs> Josh Hawley. There's a really lovely moment. Mr. Fiska, yes. Mr. Fiska, yeah. there's really a lovely moment where, where they show him running. Why do you think they did that? What was the value of, of showing Josh Hawley ski-daddling? The value was the committee telling Josh Hawley to go F himself. <laughs> I mean, I don't... They were, they were, I don't think... I don't think there was... I don't think there was a tremendous amount of probative value <laughs> no. in the presentation. I mean, It was I think, a little off-road. Well, it was off-road, but it's also like, you... You know, you went out there that day. You were... I think the message there is, and again, I think it's important for us to see that they were running because they were scared, because they were being evacuated. Right. But you went out there that day to go throw your fist up and to play with fire, mm -hmm. and everyone got to see you do that and see you fundraise after it and see you talk about how you own the libs, mm -hmm. but not see you with your tail between your legs when the mob <laughs> is about to knock down your door. You've been reporting on politics for 20 years. This is the eighth hearing, ninth hearing tonight? Yep, eighth, I think. Eighth hearing tonight. What has most surprised you? Is there anything about that surprised you most about the last eight hearings? Well, I think, I mean, I, the, the sheer amount of new information they have uncovered is genuinely remarkable. And I mean, how they've given it to us. That is the other, that was exactly what I was just going to say. It is, as a uh, television practitioner, Yeah. Uh, it has been a tour de force of production. I think I mean, it's going to change how any congressional hearing absolutely. is held to a standard because the you know the the circus that usually happens is no longer going to be seen as entertainment. This is actually informative and interesting. Yes, although the precondition, the necessary, and I agree, but the necessary precondition for that is that you have a unanimity of purpose among the members of the committee across party lines to get to the bottom of what happened and to present their case to the American public. That is usually not the case. Right. If you, if Jim Jordan were up there in his shirt sleeves, right. you know, and uh, 
you know, it, and everything is broken down in majority time, minority time, res, you know, response rebuttal, you can't do what they're doing. I think that is proof that Kevin McCarthy does not deserve to be speaker because he doesn't understand politics well he, enough to know what his own game was. Let, let we, me, I'm sorry, we've yeah. got to take a quick break. We'll come back to this. You got to take another break. We'll be right back with more Chris Hayes, everybody. Yeah.